Hello, everybody. I'm Robert Breaker, and today I want to bring a sermon to you just directly, as, as closely and as directly as I can, just straight to you, talking to you today about something that I believe is, is quite interesting and important. And what I want to do today is I want to talk to you about the blood of Jesus. Amen. One of the greatest things that we can talk about today. So let me see if I can share this with you and let's get started. Now, there's several reasons that I want to do this video and I'm doing it not in front of the whiteboard, although I am in front of the whiteboard. Technically, I am also doing it here on the computer to be able to share some things with you. And so let's see if I can share this with you. Today's sermon is going to be entitled Faith in His Blood. Faith in his blood. Now, there's several reasons that I'm doing this. First of all, a lot of people today aren't preaching faith in the blood, and they used to. They used to. Why don't they now? That's a good question. Secondly, this is the verse I was saved on. So I'm pretty excited about this verse. I think it's a great verse. Thirdly, if you know me, you know anything about me, my ministry is all about pointing people to the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. My dad has it on his grave, Romans 3.25. I want it on my grave, Romans 3.25. So if you know Robert Breaker, you know he's that guy that takes a stand on the blood of Jesus and tells people to trust in that blood for salvation. Why does he say that? Well, because that's what the Bible says. But also, the other reason that I'm doing this video as the Sermon of the Week is because I, uh, I went online and I typed in faith in his blood, and I looked and I didn't show up. <laughs> And that's the thing that I'm most known for is Romans 3.25, preaching the blood of Christ and salvation through the atonement. I want to be that guy they find on YouTube or on the internet. When you just go to any search engine and you put faith in the blood, I want to be that guy that pops up. So if you will, please share this with others in the hopes that this will get the message far and wide. And then in the fifth reason why I'm doing this video is because I've seen so many people saved over my ministry. I graduated from Bible school in 1998, and I never looked back, and I've been preaching about the blood of Jesus and telling people to put their faith in the blood of Jesus ever since, and I've been getting so many, so many people giving me testimonies of salvation saying, I got saved through faith in his blood. So I want to do this today. I want to be a blessing. I hope I'll explain this. I still have some people that email from time to time and say, I don't understand what does it mean to trust in the blood. So I want to hopefully clarify that, but I just want to give you Bible. Now, Romans chapter 325 says, whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. And we can continue here. It's a really beautiful passage to declare. I say at this time, his righteousness. All right. When you trust in the blood and you're trusting in the blood of Jesus, you're saying, I am unrighteous. I am a sinner that needs salvation. I accept what he did for me. Now he's just and the justifier of him. So it says to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Whereas boasting then, it is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So it's not works that saves us. It's faith. Faith in what? Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's salvation through faith in his blood. Now, I believe this is very important. And uh, the Bible tells us to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how we are saved, through the blood atonement. Let me show you another verse. And a lot of churches nowadays are not preaching on this like they should. And I know when I got saved, I heard this. But then I've told you my testimony, you know, 10, 20, 30 years later, they don't preach it. And I used to hear it a lot in a lot of churches. Faith in the blood. Trust the blood of Jesus. Well, the blood is the atonement. When it talks about the blood, it's talking about the blood atonement. It says, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So this blood shed of Jesus Christ, this precious blood that the Bible instructs us to put our faith in, according to the Bible, that must be received by what? By faith. So we're saved by faith. Now, let's look at Hebrews. I just want to give you some verses real quick to explain where I'm coming from. Then I want to show you some things and tell you a little bit of testimony. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's talking about God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
I recently went on a trip to Milwaukee to preach. And at the airport, we met a Calvinist and we started talking. And he said, man doesn't have a free will. <laughs> I laughed so hard because the term free will is in the King James Bible 17 times. But this was the first verse that came to my head. And I said, would you please explain that? Because we do have free will. I could punch you in the nose right now. And I did that of my own free will. Or do you think that was just ordained before? He goes, no, no. He said, okay, man has a free will to sin, he said. And that's what they do. But man has no free will to come to Jesus of his own. And I said, well, I don't believe that because whosoever will in the Bible means whosoever will of his own free will. But this verse came to my mind and it says that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. An unsaved man can seek God of his own free will. But how do you seek after God? How do you come to God? You must come by faith for without faith, it is impossible to please him. So God wants our faith. Now, we read our Bibles and we understand what our faith is to be in. And uh, we understand that we're saved by faith. Let me go to another verse here, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Again, it's not our works that saves us. It's faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we are saved by faith. Saved through faith. So the question is, logically and biblically, what? What do we put our faith in? And that's Romans 3.25, through faith in his blood. Now, let me say it like this, if you would. And uh, please allow me to, to be um, just up front with you. I just want to, I'm getting here in this mean so it's like I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with you. If you're a pastor, please hear what I'm about to say because this is important. You need to understand that the blood of Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. Now, a lot of people will, will say, yeah, I agree with that. But in their mind, the blood of Jesus is the mechanics of salvation. They think Jesus had to die to save us. Now, you can come to Jesus and be saved some other way. That does not make sense. If Jesus had to die and shed his blood to save us, then the Bible says now we have to receive that finished work, that atoning work of Christ, and we receive it by faith. So we trust in what Jesus did for us to get us to heaven. We don't trust in ourselves or in our works. We trust in that blood that was shed for us. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I don't understand that, or I don't believe that. A lot of people don't, don't even preach that anymore. But it says that he is your propitiation through faith in his blood. What's a propitiation? Well, it literally means the act of appeasing wrath. But it also, it's kind of like a substitute. Jesus died in my place for my sins. He took my hell on the cross as the wrath of God was poured about, out upon my sins on Jesus. So I can make a choice. I can reject that and pay for my sins in hell for all eternity. Or I can receive that by faith and say, I accept the transaction. I accept Jesus' payment for me in my place for my sins. I accept the blood atonement. I receive it by faith. I'm trusting in what Jesus did to get me to heaven. That's salvation. Now, I'm a King James Bible believer. And um, I don't want to say too much. But I also don't want to say too little. So let me um, tell you, if you want to learn more, you can go and, and uh, look up this website and learn some more. This is my old website. And this is my old website. And you click on here. This is made with such an old technology. I think it was front page that I can't go back and edit it. So there's some things on there I'd kind of like to take down, but there's other things on there I can't change. So I'm going to leave that there forever. And if you click on where these flags are and you go over here to the left side, why we left our old home church, you'll see why I left my old home church. And it's because I saw them beginning to change what they used to preach. And I began to see some changes and I began to see people that used to preach on the blood of Jesus, not preaching on the blood of Jesus anymore. All right. Now, enough of that. I'll stop that. And uh, we'll go back to uh, some Bible verses here in a minute. But as we do... Um, I want to give you a little bit of testimony, okay? I want to give you some testimony. I was saved on July 29th, 1992, okay? I trusted in the blood of Jesus for salvation. 
my dad sat me down. He took me through the scripture and he showed me the gospel. Now, the blood ties in with the gospel. An old preacher said one time, you can't preach the blood without preaching the gospel, and you can't preach the gospel without preaching the blood. So let's go there first. What is the gospel? Well, the gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Now look at this with me. Here's the gospel. The apostle Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, and which also you received. Salvation is receiving a free gift by faith. It's not trying to earn it. It's receiving what God offers freely by faith and wherein you stand by which also you're saved. Okay, so we're saved by this gospel. He says, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Now, what does it mean to believe in vain? Well, there's heart belief and head belief. A lot of people say, oh, I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that happened in history. But they're not trusting with all of their being, with all of their soul, with all of their might in that for them. They believe it happened, but they don't receive it for themselves. They're going to try to pay for their own sins, or they're going to try to say, God, accept my works instead of me accepting your work. That's not salvation. So that's believing in vain. Someone who's not trusting entirely on Jesus and his finished work, but is adding to it usually works. Also vain, that's kind of the root word for vanity or self. So if someone is trusting in what they do to get to heaven and not in what Jesus did for them, then they're not saved. You got to know that. So what is the gospel? Well, it's this right here. I delivered unto you, he says, first of all, that which I also received. Now look at the very first word of what the gospel is. How? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So oh, the gospel isn't just that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again. The gospel is how he died and was buried and rose again. How did he die? He shed every drop of blood. You see, you have to have blood shed in order to find forgiveness of sins. In Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22, the Bible says, and almost things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. And that's talking about of sins. So it's the blood that forgives. In the Old Testament, you brought a lamb. And you sacrifice that lamb and the priest caught the, in a cup, he caught the blood and he poured that blood out on the altar. And that was the blood atonement. And that's where they found the forgiveness of sins through a blood atonement of a lamb. Well, the Bible says, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the, the, the sin of the world. That's Jesus. He is our lamb. And so it's through his shedding of blood that forgiveness is offered to all, to all who will receive by faith. So the question is, are you saved? Have you trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ? Because Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 tells us that it's through faith in the blood. Now, I'm a King James Bible believer, all right? So I believe that salvation is by faith or through faith in his blood, okay? Now, why do I believe that? Well, because the Bible says that. But I want to show you something quite interesting. And here's, here's the sad part. I'm seeing men today who claim to be King James Bible believers who are not preaching the blood atonement of Christ. And they're not telling people to trust in the blood. They're getting them to go over here or over there or to trust in something they do. Or they're telling them just say a prayer. And then they tell them that the prayer saves them. Now, it's not a prayer that saves you. Now, you can get saved when you pray, but it's not the prayer that saves you. What if someone prays and asks God for forgiveness, but they're not trusting in the blood? And receiving the forgiveness that God offers. Are they saved? Well, no. All they've done is a, a vain religious uh, prayer. So you can't really be a Bible believer, a King James Bible believer, unless you're preaching what the King James Bible says. Here is the original 1611 King James Bible. And here it is, Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. And uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. Boy, I changed pages here. The, the wind blew it. But uh, we have Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 here. And uh, I want to show it to you, if I can get to it here real quick. Got to use these things nowadays. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25. And it says right here, whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Now, I hope you can see that. Man, I have to make that bigger, so let me remove this. And I want you to see that because I want you to see what the Bible says. It says through faith in his blood. Now, I... Hope that's enough for you to be able to see. Now, 
That's what the text says in the King James Bible. So if you're a King James Bible believer, you should be preaching what the text says and telling people, put your faith in the finished work of Christ, the blood. Now, that's God speaking. Now, let's go to the beginning of the King James Bible. And this is the translation to the reader. And did you know the people that put out the King James Bible believed that salvation was through faith in his blood? And when we go through and we actually look at the King James Bible, we find them saying it's through faith in his blood. And actually on the thumbnail of, of this video, you'll see that. But here it is right here so that you'll see. And I hope this thing will make it or you can read it. Do you see those words? It's not getting very good, but hopefully you can read through faith in his blood. This is the preface to the reader. This is the King James Bible translators in the beginning of the King James Bible telling you that Jesus Christ is the reconciliation through faith in his blood so that you need to put your faith in the blood to be saved. And then God says it in Romans chapter three and verse 25. And um, that's the apostle Paul. I love Paul giving this to us. God revealed to Paul that it isn't just who Jesus is that saves us. It's what Jesus did. It's the shedding of his blood. And then that's why it says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, it says these words, Romans 5, 9. And I hope you can read Romans 5, 9. And it says, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That wrath would be hell. So if you want to be saved, you need to place your faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that atonement, that finished work, what he did to save you, because we can't save ourselves. Trust in what he did. This is called the hexapla, all right? This is the hexapla, the English hexapla. This is um, six different versions of the Bible. The last one's the King James Bible. And I just found it interesting. I find it fascinating for all those people. What about before the King James? Okay, well, here's the 1380 Wycliffe, and it says, by faith in his blood. Here's the Tyndale of 1534, through faith in his blood. Here's Cranmer, 1539, through faith by the means of his blood. Geneva, through faith in his blood. Uh, Reims, the Dewey Reims, uh, by faith in his blood. And the King James Bible, through faith in his blood. So I just want you to understand that for over 1,500 years, true ministers have been preaching, come to Jesus through the blood and trust in his atonement, trust in his blood, put your faith in the blood, receive the atonement by faith, faith in his blood. And way before that, all the way back to the time of Paul, because Paul is the one that told people it's through faith in his blood, trust in the blood of Jesus. But what happened to me was I went to Honduras and I preached this and uh, I preached that anywhere and everywhere I and I saw a lot of people get saved. There's something about the blood. I guess it's because there's power in the blood. When we uh, sing hymns, we sing hymns about the blood of Jesus Christ. And what is one of the hymns? There's power, 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 wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. So there's power in the blood. So if there is power in the blood, then why wouldn't you preach the blood? But a lot of churches today, they preach a bloodless gospel. They leave the blood out. And the Bible says that the blood is the life. Okay, we call it the life's blood. We can't live without blood. And so we go to Leviticus 17, 11, and look what it says. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. So this is a prophecy that God is going to give his blood, God's blood, upon the altar for us, which is what Jesus is. He's God manifest in the flesh. And look at this, this great verse in Acts 20, 28. It says, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Who? God. Jesus Christ is God, and he shed his blood. And he asks us to put our faith in that precious blood that he shed to save us. So question, are you trusting in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ? Have you trusted in the blood? That's salvation. Trusting in the blood with all your heart. Not leaning to your own understanding but trusting only in the shed blood of Jesus, that finished work of Christ that's done for us. Now, if I have time, I'll get more into the finished work. It all entails the death, burial, and resurrection. And I'll try to get into that here if I can remember. But I want to tell you a little bit about um, what happened to me as an ordained minister. 
I uh, left my church and I went to go preach in the mission field. I've been in Honduras for seven years as a missionary. I came back two years before those seven years, got my wife, went back, and uh, she woke me up in the middle of the night and said, honey, I'm, I'm not saved. I finally come to the conclusion that I'm not saved. And I just got saved right now because I've given up trusting in all that I did. And I trust only in the blood of Jesus for salvation. I trust in his finished work. And I was like, wow. Well, I thought people would like to hear that because there's a lot of people out there struggling with salvation. And they're like, well, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And I doubt it all the time. Are you supposed to doubt? Well, no, you're not. And matter of fact, let's, um, let's look at a verse about doubt that's kind of scary. And, uh, Romans chapter 14. Look what it says here in Romans chapter uh, 14. And I think it's toward the end. He says, hast thou faith? All right, we're saved by faith. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he is not of faith. For whatsoever not of faith is sin. So if someone says, I don't know if I'm saved or not, I doubt it. Well, are they saved? Usually, the people that doubt, it's because they're saying, well, I don't know if I did enough for, for God to accept me. Well, that's a person who thinks that it's works-based. And salvation is not works-based. It's faith-based. And it's faith in the blood. So if you're doubting your salvation, it could be. Now, I'm not saying it is, but it very well could be you aren't saved. And it's because you're holding on to something that you did. And you haven't given that up and trusted completely upon what Jesus did. Trust in his blood. Don't trust in what you do or have done. So my wife told me, she said, well, I prayed all these prayers and I asked God to save me over and over and over in my life. And I never knew if I was saved or not. Well, you know, that's that's a, a scary thing for a lot of people. And a lot of people tell me that they go through that. And they say, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I said, so, so tell me about it, honey. What happened? She said, well, I realized it's what Jesus did. And I kept praying, Lord, if I'm not saved, please save me. If I'm not saved, Lord, please save me. If I'm not saved, please. And she said, finally, I realized if I was saved, I wouldn't be saying if. So I know I'm not saved. I've been trusting in what I did. I've been trusting in my prayer rather than trusting in the propitiation. And she gave up trusting in what she did. And she trusted solely upon the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did to save her. And she got saved. And that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And a lot of people today, um, they love to go just to one verse in Romans. A lot of people will go to just Romans chapter 10 and verse 13 and tell you that's salvation. Just Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look at that. And they don't go anywhere else in that passage. They just go, hey, just say, God, I'm a sinner. Please save me. And you called on him. Now you're saved. <laughs> Why don't they read the rest? How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? If you call on God with your mouth and say, God, please save me, but your faith is still not in the blood atonement, all you've done is asked, but where has the atonement been received? You see, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to hear the gospel preached before you get saved. And sadly, I've heard preachers go out there and say, well, you don't have to know anything to get saved. Just repeat this prayer after me. I, um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I guess I will. I'll, I'll be very careful. I don't like to name names. I don't like to hurt ministries. But uh, when I was in um, up north, I went to a mega church one Sunday because the hurricane kept us from coming home. And I'd heard good and bad of this church. So I went there to see it for myself. And this church is a church that tells people just, hey, one, two, three, repeat after me. And I listened to their preaching and I, I, I saw some things. I went over to the Spanish section and I saw them have all these people and they're showing them a couple verses out of the Bible. And then they say, now repeat this after me. And it just was, it was just strange to look at that and say, well, did they get saved? Or now are they going through the same thing my wife went through? Let me tell you my testimony real quick. I was in church most every day of my life that the doors were open. My parents took me to church. It was either one or the other, or they'd compromise and go together. And all I ever heard was Romans 10, 13. So every night before bed, I'd get down beside my bed and say, oh, God, please save me. I don't want to go to hell. No one ever gave me the gospel. <laughs> the Bible says you've got to hear the gospel. And it's the preaching of the gospel. Once you hear the gospel, that's when you believe. Um, 
So uh, I want to go through this here real quick and show you this, but you've got to hear the gospel and you've got to believe. But a lot of people will just go to Romans 10, 13. So I repeated the prayer over and over and over in my life and asked God over and over, please save me, please save me, please save me, please save me. Oh, I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. That's over a thousand prayers that I prayed begging for salvation. But it wasn't until July 29th, 1992, that my dad sat me down and took me through the scriptures. He showed me what the Bible says. He says, now, son, when have you trusted the blood? And it's when I trusted in the blood atonement, that's when I was saved. So I've never doubted it since. Because doubting it was when I was wondering if I did enough. I'm trusting only in what Jesus did for me. And I'll never doubt that Jesus did enough. So I'm trusting in him to take me to heaven, not myself. And so I've never doubted it. So I thank God for salvation. I thank God for salvation. But I was one of those that was told, if you'll just do this, then you'll go to heaven. And it made me think that the prayer itself is what saved me. So I would do the sinner's prayer thinking, well, that's the prayers got to save you because that's what they tell me. But what did they do? They took this out of context. So let's look at it in context here. The context is um, zeal according to knowledge, not according to knowledge. Someone has zeal, but no knowledge. There's something you've got to know before you can get saved. And being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Believeth in what? Believes in the blood. And it says here, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. So according to the Bible, faith is what God's looking for. And faith is what speaks from your heart. You could say whatever you want with your mouth, but until God sees your heart and the faith in him and his atonement, you're still not saved. You've said something, but have you believed? And then it says, but what saith thee? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Yes, it can come out the mouth, but it says, and in thine heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. So Paul, if you read chapter three of Romans and you read other things, he's saying that you've got to believe by faith in the gospel. Faith, receiving the atonement by faith in the blood. Now, a lot of people will run to these two verses, and that's it. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. They try to put a lot of emphasis on the mouth, but if it only comes out the mouth, but no one has believed from the heart in the finished work of Christ, that's a person that's still not saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. There it is. When I by faith believe in the blood atonement of Christ, that's when I have his imputed righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Some people try to make that a work. <laughs> That doesn't work. When you're saved, you confess it. After you're saved, you will confess. You don't confess to get saved. Otherwise, the mouth saves you. You, When you are saved, you confess. Hey, now I'm saved. Matter of fact, let me show you that verse real quick. Second, I think it's uh, 2 Corinthians 4.13, if I remember right. Let me show you this. 2 Corinthians 4.13, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So you don't speak to get saved. You don't confess to be saved. When you are saved by receiving the blood through the faith, then you confess, hey, I got saved. Hey, I'm trusting in the blood atonement of Christ. So I'm really sad to see so many people out there preaching a bloodless gospel and going to scriptures and perverting them. But look what it says. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And then it talks about calling upon him and you call upon him. But how do you call upon him? You call upon him by faith in the blood atonement. And how do you call on him whom you not believe? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. All right. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So you have to hear the gospel, understand and believe to be saved. But in the world we live in today, there's a lot of people that aren't preaching that sound biblical doctrine. They're just going right here and they're going say, saying, hey, whosoever's called by the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then they don't read the context. And they tell you, if you'll just pray this prayer after me, you'll go to heaven. But where is the faith in the blood? A lot of times a person does that and they've never heard the gospel and they're not trusting in Christ. 
They're trusting in themselves, their work, their baptism, their church attendance, or even in the in the actual prayer themselves that they do. They're trusting in the prayer, thinking they deserve to go to heaven because of their prayer. So what I want to do is I want to take you through the scriptures and I want to show you what the Bible says. And Romans 3 comes way before Romans chapter 10, believe it or not. And Romans 3.25 is whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the mission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So with all this put together, are you a Bible believer? Do you believe what the Bible says? Is your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ? Because that's what the Bible instructs us to do is to trust in the blood of Jesus. You either do or you don't. If you're a King James Bible believer and you believe this book, King James, then why aren't you preaching Romans 3.25? Because the men who put this out preached that, and they said it's through faith in his blood. And Christians throughout the centuries have preached trust in the atonement of Christ. Now, what does it mean to trust in the blood atonement of Jesus? And when we say through faith in his blood, what does that mean? Well, according to the gospel, it's the death, burial, and resurrection. And one old preacher said, you can't preach the blood without preaching the gospel, and you can't preach the gospel without preaching the blood. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, again, is all about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was buried and that he rose again the third day, how he died for our sins. So here's what happened according to the Bible. Jesus died on the cross. He shed every drop of blood. He was buried in the very ground that his blood went into. The Bible talks about how his blood cried out from the ground, just like Abel's. But then he rose again the third day, and the Bible tells us that he rose into heaven. And uh, he went into heaven with his blood. And we read that in the Bible. And the Bible talks about how when Jesus rose again, he took his blood up to the mercy seat. And that's in the Bible. Now, I won't go through all the scriptures, but read Hebrews chapter 7 and 8 and 9 sometime and see that for yourself. Because it talks about how the pattern of the tabernacle on earth that the Jews did was a pattern of the heavenly, right? So there was a heavenly tabernacle in heaven. And the Bible says, but Christ being become an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Jesus rose from the dead and went to heaven with his blood and put it on the altar in heaven. And it is still there to this day to wash your sins away. Now, you can look at some of these preachers online if you want to. You know what they'll say? No, that's not true. That's No, it's not that. that. Um, the Bible says that when you're saved, when you receive the atonement by faith, look at what it says. He says he washed us from our sins in his own blood. So Jesus dies and he sheds his blood. Then he takes that blood three days after he rose from the dead and he put that blood in the mercy seat in heaven. And that blood is in the spirit world. And our soul is washed in that precious blood from all of our sins. And our sins are washed away when we trust in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. So I want to go with the Bible. Now, with this stated, there are a lot of people out there that claim to be Christians who say, well, I don't believe that. Well, okay, if you want to deny the Bible, you're welcome. Go ahead. But unfortunately, there's way too many that do. But every time someone tells me that they were confused, they were one of those saying, well, I think I was saved, so I'd pray, Lord, if I'm saved, please save me again or whatever. When they heard the message of the blood atonement of Christ and they trusted in the blood, you know what they told me? They told me, I understand and I believe, and now I know that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. So if you don't want people to live in continual doubt then shouldn't you give them the true message of put your faith in this? Because everyone who I've ever talked to that said they got saved by faith in the blood says, I've never doubted it since. It took away all my doubt. And you know, let me read that again, Romans 5.11, because uh, Romans 5.11 really says it very well. There's something that comes with salvation that's wonderful. Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. And not only so, but we also 
Look at this. Joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. How do you receive the blood atonement? By faith in the blood. And when you do, you get that little three-letter word. You get joy. And I have received hundreds, if not thousands, of emails and letters in the mail from people who say, Brother Breaker, I got saved hearing your gospel presentation. And I'm trusting in the blood. And the joy came into me. And I'm so thankful because I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Because it's not me doing works to try to get there. Yes, after we're saved, we do good works. Not to get saved or stay saved, but because we are saved. But I'm not trusting in me or my works, they say. I'm trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So I wanted to come to you today, give you this brief message, and talk about faith in the blood. And I wanted to tell you that if that's the true message of salvation, and it is, then it ought to be preached. So why are there so many today that claim to be Christians that aren't preaching Put your faith in the blood of Jesus. I think that's a sign of apostasy. And I think that's a sign of an apostate. So if you're not preaching, trust the blood of Jesus, then you're an apostate and you need to get saved. And if you are saved and you've just started preaching something you heard someone else say, cut it out and get back to the biblical message of faith in the blood. When I got saved, all these preachers my dad would take me to listen to, they all said, trust the blood of Jesus. 5, 10, 15 years later, I tried to listen to them. They changed their message. I said, why are you not saying faith in the blood like they used to? Now they're saying, just ask God to save you or just repeat this prayer to go to heaven. Why did they change their message? I don't know, but I'm not going to ever change my message. Now, what I thought I'd do now is go and show you how some new versions of the Bible mess things up. And there's a lot of new versions of the Bible that... uh, that really mess things up. And I don't want to do that. So let's see here. Share screen. I'm going to go to uh, a couple of places and we're going to just look at new versions of the Bible. And let's see, if I was the devil, what would I do? I would try to divert people from the blood of Christ, the only thing that can save them. And I would try to divert them from putting their faith in Christ, which is how we're saved, trusting in the blood atonement. So when you start looking at new versions of the Bible, what do they do? Well, here's what they do. Are you ready? God presented him as a propitiation through faith in his blood. Okay, so that one says it correctly. Praise God. Whom God put forth as a propitiation by his blood to receive by faith. All right, so now the propitiation was by his blood, and you can receive that, but by faith. Faith in what? It's specific in the true Bible through faith in his blood. So why does this say by his blood, comma, to be received? What is that? Someone changed it. The King James says it correctly, through faith in his blood. The Message Bible. Now, here's a message that's weird. God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world to clear that world of sin. Having faith in him sets us clear. (laughs) So faith in him? Now, what does the Bible say? Is it enough to just believe in Jesus? Well, what does that mean, believe in Jesus? I don't understand. People say sometimes, you know, I just believe in Jesus. What is it that you believe? Do you know that the devils can say that they believe in Jesus because they believe he exists? The Bible says, thou believest the one God, thou doest well. Even the devils believe and tremble. Devils believe in Jesus, and they tremble knowing that he is going to judge them someday. But do the devils trust in the blood atonement of Christ? Have they received the sacrifice? No, because they can't. Nowhere in the Bible do we see that Jesus died for the devils. So this looks really weird. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. They changed it. They changed it. What does it mean to have faith in him? How about faith in his blood? All right? In his blood through faith. That changes it a little bit. Makes it a little more murky and cloudy and harder to understand. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. (laughs) But faith in what? It doesn't tell you what to put your faith in. This one gets it wrong because it makes it even more cloudy. Whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith. (laughs) Through faith? Whose faith? Jesus' faith or our faith? You know, in the Bible, it talks about the faith of Christ and the faith of us. So who's got the faith here? That really messes it up. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, comma, shedding his blood. That messes it up a little bit. Whom God put forth as a sacrifice of atonement, effective through faith. Okay, 
Through faith in what? Now, wait a minute. Effective through. So the blood atonement of Christ is not effective? That just sounds really like Paul's doctrine right there. Um, here's a really weird one. Whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith. But look, it says comma, through faith. Comma, in his blood. <laughs> well, that's a lot of commas going on there. Um, what is that even saying? Well, this is an elliptical clause, if that's the way you want it. So whom God set forth to be a propitiation in his blood. <laughs> to show his there's this see how confusing new versions of the bible are how it's harder to get saved whom god has put forward as a sign of mercy through faith by his blood to make clear his righteousness no where's through faith in his blood through his faithlessness <laughs> wait what through his faithfulness oh faithfulness okay god displayed jesus as the place of sacrifice where mercy is found by means of his blood okay where's the faith? They messed that thing so far up, they put faithfulness instead of our faith in Jesus' blood. Look at this one. Through his faithfulness, God displayed Jesus as the place of sacrifice where mercy is found by means of his blood. Yeah, that's the same as the one before. Um, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? What is this? Whom God has set forth a mercy seat through faith in his blood for the showing forth of his, a mercy seat. Okay, I understand. But that doesn't make any sense to someone. Makes it a little hard to get saved, actually. God offered him so that by his blood he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. There you go again. Faith in Jesus, not faith in the blood of Jesus. That's salvation, faith in the blood. And on and on and on it goes. Um, some of these, many of these, make it Cloudy, murky, hard to understand, hard to get saved. There's our King James through faith in his blood. How how simple, how concise, how understandable through faith in his blood. Trust the blood. You're saved through faith in his blood. Um, there's so many here. I don't have time to read them all. But what a thing to go through. Here's here's the Greek New Testament. All right. Hon pros, proetheto hosteos. Elastarin, elastreon diapistus in to autu ham, haimati. There it is. Pistos is faith. Through faith in his blood. Right there. That is a literal translation from the Greek New Testament. Through faith in his blood. Why do all these new versions change it? Why don't they put exactly what the Greek text says through faith in his blood? I think it's the devil trying to mess things up. Here's the Latin Vulgate, which I don't agree with 100%, but it says perfidum in sanguine ipsius, ipsius, through faith in his blood. Why would you change through faith in his blood? So there's some new versions of the Bible. Let's see if I can change this now, and let's look at this one here, a different one. And uh, I want you to see this because I want you to see just how hard it is to get saved in new versions of the Bible. Let's go and share this screen this time. And I hope this is the different one. Or is this the same one? Yeah, this might be a different one. And here's the message Bible. God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world. Okay. To clear that world of sin, having faith in him sets us clear. This sounds really weird. I guess we've read most of these. But what I'm trying to show you, do you see how new versions of the Bible muddy up the water? It makes it harder to understand salvation whom God displayed publicly before the eyes of the world as a life-giving sacrifice of atonement and reconciliation by his blood to be received through faith. Okay, faith in what? You just changed that so much that now I know I'm saved by faith, but now I don't know what I put my faith in. But you take the King James, it says through faith in his blood, just like older texts say, just like the originals say. So anyway, it's, it's, it's just, it's sad. It's very, very sad to see what new versions of the Bible do, how many of them change through faith in his blood. And that's salvation, according to the Bible. It's through faith in his blood. So I just wanted to present this to you today and hope that uh, this was a blessing. And I want everyone to know that salvation is through faith in his blood. And uh, hopefully this video will get enough views that if anyone goes to any search engine online and types in, faith in his blood, this will be the first one.
And this will be the gospel message of how to be saved. And the Bible teaches us that it is the blood. Now, when you're talking about the blood, what are you talking about? You're talking about the sacrificial blood atonement of Christ. That's a term I like to use, sacrificial blood atonement. When you're preaching the gospel, you're preaching about his sacrifice of his blood. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 through 12, say it very well. 10, 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ once for all. How did he offer himself up? As a blood sacrifice. And every priest standeth daily ministering and oftentimes, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Look at that, which can never take away sins. If you go to a church and they do something and they call it a sacrifice and they say you got to do this to, to get your sins forgiven, they are denying the true blood atonement of Christ. And they're trying to sacrifice something else. That's not true. That's not a right religion. That's a false religion. But this man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. So it's the sacrificial blood atonement. So when you're preaching the sacrifice of Christ, you're preaching his blood. But why don't you just say it the simplest way, the way the Bible does? Have you trusted in the blood of Jesus? Have you put your faith in the blood? For Christ hath also once suffered for sins. How did he suffer? He shed his blood. The just for the unjust. You're the sinner. He had to die for the sinner to save them because the sinner can't save themselves. Why did Jesus die? That he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So it's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's that shed blood. And when we trust in the blood, we are saved. And whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. When you trust the blood atonement of Christ, when you trust that gospel, same thing, the blood, the gospel, the gospel is the blood. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You get the Holy Spirit the very, very moment you believe in the blood atonement of Christ. When you trust in what Jesus did, that finished work, and receive it by faith, trusting only 100% in what he did to get you to heaven, nothing of your own self-righteousness, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells inside of you. That's how you get the Holy Spirit. If any other denomination teaches otherwise, they're not teaching the Bible. And I've heard people in other denominations, well, we say we get the Holy Spirit like this, or we say we get the Holy Spirit like that. No, the Bible says you get the Holy Spirit when you trust the blood. So I want you all to understand faith in his blood. If you're a pastor, if you're a missionary, if you're an evangelist, if you're a Bible school teacher, if you're a preacher, if you're a soul winner, if you're just a layman in church, Make sure you point sinners to the blood for salvation and faith in that blood. Time is short. Jesus is coming back and there's going to be a lot of people left behind. And the last thing I want to do is not preach the blood. The last thing I want to do is make someone religious and they get religion, but not salvation. And I have suffered a lot for this. I have been attacked. I've been ridiculed. I've had to leave churches. I've had to withdraw fellowship some, from people who no longer want to preach the blood of Jesus and point people to faith in the blood. And I say, bye-bye, because I want to be a faithful minister of the gospel. And I want to point them to the power. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation is what it says in Romans 1.16. So there's power in the gospel. And the power of the gospel is the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. So I didn't know what to preach on this week. But I thought I would just come to you and give you a plain, simple, basic gospel message. Someone loved you enough to die in your place for your sins. He took your hell on the cross for you in your place so that you don't have to go to hell. He shed his blood for you. Now he asks, will you receive my blood atonement? Will you receive what I did for you by faith? Will you trust in what I did for you to take you to heaven? And if you do, you're going to heaven. Praise the Lord. If you don't, I would hate to be in your shoes at the judgment. I would hate to be you standing before God at the judgment. When God says, why should I let you to heaven? 
And when God says, well, all I want to know is, when did you put your faith in my blood atonement for your sins? Thank you for watching. I hope this has been a blessing. I hope if you're a true King James Bible believer, you will preach the King James Bible and what the people that even put it out preached. But even more than that, what true Christians all the way back to the 1300s preached. Matter of fact, all the way back to Paul. That's what we're reading right here, Romans 3. What he preached. True Christianity preaches a blood-stained gospel and faith in the blood to be saved. False Christianity preaches a bloodless gospel. They leave out the atonement of Christ and they tell you, now come to God this way. Either it's through their church or through their rituals or their rites or through their baptism or through their uh, uh, catechism or through, and they'll tell you, do all these things to get to heaven. And you ask them, what if I do all those things? They usually say, well, you just might make it if you're lucky. <laughs> There's one big religion that says, no, you're going to purgatory no matter what. So then why even do all that stuff? But if you want to know how to get to heaven when you die, the Bible is very clear. Trust the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith in the blood. It's also trust. Trusting is having faith. It's also believing. But it's not just believing from the head. It's believing from the heart. And it's like resting. It's resting in what Jesus did. As I'm sitting in this chair, resting in this chair, knowing that I won't fall, I trust this chair. I trust in Jesus. I rest. I sit in him. And I say, Lord, you said you'd save me. I trust you. I accept. I rest in your finished work. I trust your blood for salvation. So I'm a saved man, and I know it. Should I tell you this story real quick? I usually go about an hour. I don't want to go too long today, but okay, I'll tell you the story. Years ago, I, I met a young lady and my dad said, you should write to her and you should marry her. She's a good girl and stuff like that. And I wasn't married yet and I was trying to find a wife. And so I, I wrote to her a couple of times and we wrote back. But then the last thing I got was a letter and it was so weird. And it was, wow, you think you're so great because you know you're going to heaven when you die. And that was it. And I don't know what that was all about, but that's someone who doesn't know if they're saved. And I desperately wanted to get that person the message of, hey, if you will trust in the blood and quit trusting in your own self-righteousness and trust only in his righteousness and blood, then you'll be saved. Trust in what Jesus did. Don't trust in yourself. Then you'll have that joy and then you'll know that you're saved but I never heard back. I don't know if I've ever seen that person ever again. And that is so sad. I don't want people out there sitting in churches that are Christians or claiming to be at least who are lost and who don't know if they're saved or not. So the only thing I know to do from the Bible and from my experience as a minister and from the testimonies that I get is to tell you Everybody who's contacted me and said they got saved, they said, I appreciate it. I heard the gospel from you, and I never understood or heard about the blood. I trust the blood. Now I know that I know that I know that I'm saved, and I don't doubt it anymore, and I have joy. I have peace. I have happiness knowing that I'm on my way to heaven when I die because I have my faith in the blood, just like the Bible says. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope this has been a blessing. I hope you'll share this with others. I believe the rapture is coming very, very soon. And I believe Jesus is coming back. And if he doesn't, then I believe some bad things are coming very, very soon <laughs> with the way things are going in the world. And uh, we're about to go through, as the Bible says, very perilous times. And I just want to see people get saved before they die so that I'll see them in heaven with me. So you can't fault me for wanting to help and wanting to give people the best, which is an afterlife in heaven with Jesus. Because I sure don't want to see them go to that other place where there's pain and suffering and torment. I want them to come to Jesus Christ for salvation. So I appreciate you listening to me today. I hope this was a blessing. I hope it helped you and clarify to understand, don't trust in you and what you do. Trust in what Jesus did. Don't trust in man and what they tell you. Trust in the Bible. Don't trust in yourself. Trust in the blood of Jesus Christ because he is our propitiation 
through faith in his blood. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Lord willing, if we're still here, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.